Well, I haven't done one of these tariff rule of thumb videos for a while, and there are a few reasons for that that I'll get into in this video, but I thought I'd better do a quick update since the tariffs are quite different from the last time I did this. Um, but uh, the main thing I want to talk to you about today is uh, the future of the tariff rule of thumb, because I've got some big plans um, that I'll describe after I've gone through uh, the update. So how about we do the update first, and then I'll get on to that other stuff shortly afterwards. So this is the tariff rule of thumb spreadsheet and what I've done here is I've updated all of the tariffs in these cells here. Um, now these are all octopus tariffs and I've got the links to the various um, rates pages here. You can click on those if you want to go and check out the rates for your particular region. Uh, I've uh, also left space. You can um, change any of these by the way for any other tariff from any other supplier if you so wish. Uh, there's no restriction on this so for example if you prefer to try out the Eon, uh, dry, Eon Next Drive uh, tariff, then you can replace you know one of these with that instead, and uh, away you go, and you can do that comparison. But um, for now, I've got all of the Octopus ones in here, uh, and uh, yeah, the, so basically, the idea behind this ta uh, this rule of thumb is that it does a very simple calculation, uh, assuming that you uh, cover all of your um, house demand using your battery or solar um, basically covering everything that you consume using off-peak rates and then you export all of your solar out to the grid for whatever the export rate is. Now one of the reasons I've not done an update to this recently is because Flux has changed somewhat so that so that that strategy is no longer optimal. Um, in other words, uh, the day rate for export is now lower than the overnight import rate, which means uh, this strategy is not really a good one for flux and that makes this tariff rule of thumb not quite relevant for flux. So bear that in mind for the rest of this. I think it still works for intelligent flux but uh, flux is um, is not really ideal ideal with the calculation that I'm performing here. So what I want to do is do a much more um, detailed version of this. Uh, I'll describe in a bit later that will hopefully account for the um, the weird way that Flux is going now. Uh, but uh, so let's just get on with the comparison. So I've, um, I've added all of the rates in here and I've added flexible in just for a comparison. And if I go to uh, what I call the big chart down here, this is the sort of main important chart that allows you to compare relatively easily between the tariffs. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with this, the lower down on this axis here, this relative cost axis, the more negative or the lower down um, a line is the better it is cost in terms of cost effectiveness. So for the purposes of uh, reading this chart, what you would do is you would say, right, what's the, my, what's my ratio between generation and consumption for a particular month? So for example, for us in June, it was about 2.7, something like that. So that'll be it way up at this end. And if I read this up, the first line I hit is intelligent flux. And that would suggest to, to me that we should be on intelligent flux um, for certainly for June and probably all of the summer months. And then intelligent go would be the next one if I didn't want to use intelligent flux and then regular go and then cozy and then we've got flux and flexible put, uh, bringing up the rear uh, as the uh, the least cost effective tariffs if you didn't generate quite as much if you were closer to something like one to one so you're generating about the same amount that you're consuming so for us that would be sort of March time for um, a lot of people that might be um, most of the summer uh, if you've got a smaller array than we've got we've got a very big array so we tend to generate more than we need in the summer but let's say you're generating the same amount as what you're consuming in a particular month then this would this chart would suggest that intelligent go is the best option for you uh, followed by go and then flux and intelligent flux um, and then finally cozy and flexible bringing up the rear so that's the way you read this chart now if I go back to the uh, the main tab here um, if you are unable to get a particular tariff for example if you don't have an EV you wouldn't be able to get either go or intelligent go so you can go up to this drop down here and you can just simply click ignore and I'll do that for both of these and let's say you don't have a heat pump either you've just got solar and batteries then you wouldn't be able to get cozy so let's click ignore on that that removes those uh, those tariffs from the chart and if I then click on here, you can see it's it's left behind only the three uh, tariffs that are relevant to you. So we've got flux, intelligent flux, and the flexible tariff. Um, annoyingly, the, the the colors change, which I haven't been able to resolve, but uh, hopefully it makes sense. Um, so they, they no longer match the, the color coding on, on the uh, main page here, but uh, let's roll with it for now. So you can see from this that uh, um, flux is probably the better option as long as you're generating less than you're consuming in a given month. 
but it very quickly becomes um, uh, beneficial to move to intelligent flux if you're generating more than you consume. And at no point is it ever worth sticking with the flexible uh, tariff. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the main page and I'm gonna switch back on um, all of these uh, three tariffs that I turned off before and I'm setting them to the export strategy. And what I mean by export strategy is that you charge up your battery at the cheap rate uh, whatever the cheap rate happens to be for your particular tariff and then you export all of your solar out to the grid at the export rate and that's why I uh, think that it's not really um, particularly relevant for flux at the moment. The uh, flexible tariff I've set to what I've called self-consumption because with um, the flexible tariff you obviously don't have an overnight rate and you're better off actually self-consuming as much as possible and what I mean by that is using your solar to, um, cons to uh, cover your consumption your house consumption and using your solar to fill your batteries and at no point ever force exporting your batteries you're just using your batteries to increase the level of self-consumption um, you can if you so chose uh, you could change for example the intelligent go to a self-consumption mode but there's really no point in doing that um, it is absolutely the best option to go for the export strategy with intelligent go and go uh, for flux and intelligent flux i've also left those as the export strategy um, because uh, the self-consumption goes a bit weird for the flux tariff um, really you need a completely different tariff uh, strategy for flux uh, and uh, intelligent flux um, because they they behave in a very different way and in particular as soon as the day export rate drops below the overnight import rate this strategy doesn't really isn't really optimal and neither is the self-consumption strategy what you really want to do is use your batteries to um, is use solar to charge your batteries during the during the day up until 4 p.m and then force export as much as you can during the 4 p.m till 7 p.m uh, peak window which is when you get the really good export rate so that's why um, this uh, this rule of thumb has sort of fallen apart a little bit for for flux and that leads me on to what I want to talk about next so where to begin? Well, this sort of leads me on to the subject of the future of the channel as it stands. So at the moment, I've been trying to put out a video every week um, and I've been finding it pretty tough. Um, it takes a lot of time to put these videos together and it's uh, essentially uh, eating into all of my free time. Uh, and that means that I've got no time to work on things like improving the tariff rule of thumb. Uh, and as you saw, uh, it's already become quite a lot more complicated than my original intention because of the way the tariffs have gone, in particular flux um, with the, the lower day export rate. That's completely changed the way the calculation needs to be done. And it means that uh, the, um, the way I'm doing it in the spreadsheet is not really uh, tenable any longer. So what I would like to do is transition uh, the tariff rule of thumb to a web application. Uh, and make that available um, through my website, which I'll put together at some point. Now, this is not something I've really done before. Um, I do coding as my day job, so I'm, you know, I'm fully capable of doing the coding. Uh, so you may think um, I do a lot of uh, spreadsheets, but actually the majority of my day job is actually uh, computer programming. I do some spreadsheets in my day job, but actually most of it is computer programming. So I think I can actually do a, a much better job of this tariff rule of thumb if I can write it in code rather than relying on a spreadsheet. However, it's going to take me a while to do that. And the only way I can free up the time in order to dedicate uh, sufficient time to actually put that together is by reducing the number of videos I do. So my plan is to drop down to something like uh, fortnightly videos every other week, which allows me um, the in-between weeks to work on uh, improving and updating the uh, the tariff rule of thumb to make it more applicable, make it um, cope with a wider range of uh, of systems. Because at the moment there are a lot of baked in assumptions uh, in terms of battery size and things like that. So what I ultimately would like to do is make it a lot more flexible, a lot more accurate, uh, and allow uh, a wider range of people to get the best uh, tariff out of it. Um, because at the moment, I probably, so when I first put, put the, the rule of thumb together, my intention was to get 80% of people uh, an okay tariff rather than 20% of people the perfect tariff. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but what I really want to do is be able to get 100% of people uh, a good tariff, and maybe not the perfect tariff, but certainly a good enough tariff. Um, so in order to do that, the calculation needs to be a bit more complicated. I need to... Um, ask for more information in terms of things like battery size, inverter output and stuff like that. And um, 
as soon as that it becomes more complicated, uh, doing it in the spreadsheet isn't really um, a sensible way of doing it anymore. So that's why I want to move to the web app. So uh, yeah, please bear with me while I put that together. It could take me a little while. Um, so in the meantime, the number of videos I'm going to be outputting is going to reduce. Hopefully you're okay with that. Um, but uh, because of that, it means that I'm going to also dial back the number of uh, the, how often I do my um, monthly stats updates. I'm going to move to every two months instead of every month and do two months worth of updates for that. And that frees up um, another uh, you know, fortnightly video to be something a little bit more interesting, hopefully. So that's my plan. Uh, I hope uh, that's acceptable to everybody. Um, uh, please do subscribe if you're not already, if you want to keep abreast of all of the updates as I, as I, as I do them uh, to the, uh, the spreadsheet rule of thumb. And as soon as that becomes available, you'll know about it. Uh, it will be uh, freely available initially, um, certainly the, the first version. But of course, you are always free to, uh, to contribute in terms of um, helping support the channel by switching to Octopus, for example. Use the, uh, the referral link that's above my head now. And uh, obviously subscribe, of course, that's the easiest way of supporting the channel. So I hope that's all okay with you guys and I'll catch you in a couple of weeks, hopefully. But uh, until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.